Classical Music Readers, Level 4. The Works of Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Copyright 2023 Seed Learning. All rights reserved. Who was Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky? Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky is one of Russia's most famous composers. Many people around the world know the music from his ballets and symphonies. However, he wrote more music than that. He wrote 11 full operas, along with more than a hundred pieces for the piano, among other things. Tchaikovsky was born in Votkinsk in 1840. He was the second of six children born to Ilya Tchaikovsky and Alexandra Assier. His father was the president of a metal factory. As a child, Tchaikovsky enjoyed playing music. He took some lessons, but his teachers didn't think he was very good. Tchaikovsky's father told his son to study something else, so that he could get a good job later. Tchaikovsky listened to his father, did well in school, and then started working in a government office. However, Tchaikovsky never lost his interest in music. When he was 21 years old, he decided to go back to school and study music. One of his teachers thought the young man had talent. This teacher encouraged Tchaikovsky, and his music career began. Tchaikovsky started off writing short pieces and songs. He completed his first symphony in 1866, at the age of 26. Two years later, he composed his first opera. The year after that, Tchaikovsky composed his first real masterpiece, a piece for an orchestra. This was an overture for Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. For the next 23 years, Tchaikovsky wrote music for individual musicians, full orchestras, and shows for the theater. Sometimes critics didn't like his work, but the public did. In 1893, Tchaikovsky completed Symphony No. 6 in B minor, which he thought was his best work. Also known by the name Pathetic Symphony, this was Tchaikovsky's sixth symphony. It was first played for an audience on October 30, 1893. Nine days later, Tchaikovsky suddenly died of cholera. Tchaikovsky's surprising death was sad news for the music world. Pathetic Symphony included new ideas Tchaikovsky had about music, and these ideas are what helped make the symphony a masterpiece. <laughs> Eighteen twelve Overture, eighteen eighty. The eighteen twelve Overture is probably Tchaikovsky's most famous work. However, the piece was not written in eighteen twelve. That was years before Tchaikovsky was born. This piece is actually about the war that Russia fought with France in eighteen twelve. Tchaikovsky began writing the 1812 Overture in 1880. He was asked to compose a work for a special celebration in Russia. The country had plans to celebrate the opening of a new cathedral in Moscow in 1882. This cathedral was built as a memorial to the War of 1812. Also, 
the year 1882 would mark the 25th year of Emperor Alexander II's reign over Russia. Tchaikovsky was asked to write music for an orchestra to play at the cathedral in celebration of these two great events. If you listen closely to the 1812 overture, you will hear the whole story of the war in this piece. The piece begins with music that reminds people of French soldiers coming into Russia. The music continues and builds to show how France was winning. In fact, part of the French national anthem, La Marseillaise, can be heard at this point. Then parts from several old Russian songs come into the piece. This shows how Russians began fighting back against the French. Suddenly, five cannon blasts are heard in the music. These cannons represent the moment when the war turned and the Russians began to push the French out of their country. Finally, the 1812 overture ends with the happy ringing of victory bells and 11 more cannon blasts. Eugene Onegin, 1878 Outside of Russia, Tchaikovsky is best known for his symphonies and ballet music. However, Russians know him as a great composer of operas. Over his life, Tchaikovsky wrote 11 operas. Of those, Eugene Onegin is the most famous. Tchaikovsky completed Eugene Onegin in 1878, just one year after he completed his famous ballet, Swan Lake. Eugene Onegin was performed for the first time in 1879, not by a large opera company, but by the students of the Moscow Conservatory. Why did Tchaikovsky want to try out his new opera with students first? For one thing, this was not like other Russian operas of that time. Other operas used lots of singers, amazing sets, and costumes, and told stories of big events in history. Eugene Onegin did not. Tchaikovsky chose to keep it simple, with no set changes. This opera comes from a story of the same name by the famous Russian author Alexander Pushkin. It is a sad love story told in just a few scenes. In the story, a young girl, Tatiana, falls in love with Eugene. He says he is not the man for her, and they part. Sometime later, Eugene and Tatiana meet again at a party. Tatiana's sister is there too. Tatiana's sister is in love with Eugene's best friend. Eugene makes his friend angry by dancing with his friend's girlfriend. They fight a duel with guns, and Eugene kills his friend. Many years later, Eugene sees Tatiana at a ball, but she is now married to a rich man. Eugene regrets turning her away years earlier and tries to get her to leave her husband to run away with him. However, Tatiana won't, leaving Eugene alone with his broken heart. The Nutcracker, 1892 Do you know the famous Christmas ballet, The Nutcracker? 
Tchaikovsky composed this ballet in 1892, just one year before he suddenly died. The story of the Nutcracker comes from a German story written in 1816. This story was popular in Russia, so a famous ballet director asked Tchaikovsky to turn it into a ballet. This director had worked with Tchaikovsky before. He directed Tchaikovsky's ballet Sleeping Beauty, and that show had done very well. In the Nutcracker, a little girl Clara gets a funny Christmas gift. This gift looks like a wooden soldier, but it is a Nutcracker. At night, the Nutcracker and other toys come to life, and fight mice in Clara's bedroom. Clara shrinks to the size of her toys and helps them fight the mice. They win. And the Nutcracker turns into a prince, who takes the girl to the land of sweets, where they meet the Sugar Plum Fairy. They have a wonderful time and watch lots of interesting dances. At the end, Clara wakes up, holding her Nutcracker. Today. People love the music and the dancing of the Nutcracker, and many enjoy watching this ballet every year as a family Christmas tradition.